Hi everyone, I'm Oliver Wise. I'm director of the Office of Performance and Accountability for the city of New Orleans. Uh, New Orleans and Code for America have had a really great partnership uh, for a while now, and I'm here to give you some updates since 2012. Hey, Eddie. <laughs> uh, when we initially had that engagement with Eddie and et al. Um, so, uh, a little context. So, Mayor Landry comes to office in 2010, and the city is awash in blight. So, as a result of Hurricane Katrina and decades of economic and demographic decline, uh, we have about 45,000 units in the city that look like this, that are vacant, abandoned, in terrible condition, and that repre represents about 30% of our housing stock. So what did we do about it? We um, set a very big goal. We were going to reduce blight by 10,000 units by 2014, and we articulated a comprehensive strategy for how we're going to get there. We also, uh, in order to track progress towards the goals uh, outlined in that strategy, my team created a program called Blightstat. So what we do in Blightstat is we hold a meeting every month uh, that's completely open to the public, where we get all the key personnel in city government and in quasi-government in one room uh, to, to, to review data, to understand what's working, what's not, what we need to do to improve, to problem solve, uh, to continuously improve, that sort of thing. And, um, ah, all right. Here's a throwback picture from uh, 2012 at one of our Blightstat meetings. That was the year when uh, those great CFA fellows uh, created this awesome app called Blight Status, which um, allows anyone in the world at any time to quickly navigate our open data to understand where a particular property uh, that, they're that they're interested in is progressing through our uh, enforcement pipeline. So that was great. And what have we done since then? Uh, three updates. Update number one, we hit our goal. Great, thank you. Um, so uh, we worked with this great professor, Peter Yockey, from the University of New Orleans to help us do an estimate of how much blight we had in 2013, and it showed that we exceeded our goal in blight reduction, and as far as we know, uh, New Orleans is reducing blight faster than anywhere in the country right now. All right, update number two. Uh, we're integrating open data and open code into our internal operations. So let me tell you what I mean by that. So traditionally, the way you do business intelligence and the way we did Blightstat for the last three or four years is you have an administrative database, you do some flat file export, then you do all this cleaning, manipulation, analysis, taking away uh, no, val no values, that sort of thing. Then you create a graph in, uh, in Excel and plop it in a PowerPoint and give it to your boss or whoever is going to read it. Then, if you're progressive, you might also have an OPA data platform. Um, but what happens is there's a bifurcation between the two. And all this stuff to the right becomes the data of record, because that's what all the decision makers are looking at. And then you get all this other stuff to the left, and invariably you're going to have inconsistencies between the two, because what actual decision makers are looking at is different than what the public looks at. So what we're doing instead is running all our Blightstat reports, preparing for the, that monthly meeting by analyzing the data on data.nola.gov. So that data that's out there is the data that's being used for internal operations. And furthermore, and here's a really exciting piece, uh, one of our star analysts, uh, Dylan Nags, is writing code in R, uh, which is completely free, as everyone in this room knows, um, to write the script for that analysis so that that analysis is reproducible any, to anywhere and any time. Uh, and that's especially important, I think, now that we're in our second term and we want this type of work to endure beyond Mayor Landrieu's tenure, is that the next mayor and whomever he or she brings on will be able to reproduce the work that we've done and will continue to, to very easily reproduce this work going forward. Also, in your cities, you can use this stuff too. All right, and then the third piece, uh, and this is 
a little half-baked um, and very much a work progress at this point, so keep that in mind and bear with me. But we're using analytics, especially uh, employing methodologies developed by Mike Flowers, who's been a really, truly outstanding mentor and partner to us for, for a while now, in order to be, uh, make our blight fighting efforts more surgical. So here's what I mean by that. So there's lots of ways you can reduce blight, housing redevelopment, demolition, uh, repurposing through urban ag, that sort of thing. But by far the cheapest thing is just to compel a property owner to compliance. That's a big sm smiley face. So what then leads to compliance? That's the analytics question. Uh, I'm going to, all right, well. So thank you. Um, <laughs> So what we did is uh, Dylan Nags went into, he sat in lots of hear, uh, uh, hearings, he talked to code enforcement staff, understand what could be those variables that explain why some property owners comply and others don't. He got about 30 or 40 different guesses, hypotheses. He then tested those hypotheses using data from 311, Census Bureau, tax records, et cetera, et cetera. Only about three or four emerged of actually helping explain why some properties come in compliance. So here's an illustration of that. Typical blighted property, only 19% comply. Blighted property with three or fewer violations, you get over twice the compliance rates. You put that same property in an uh, area with a pretty strong market, and your compliance rates goes up by threefold. So we're very much now trying to figure out how to operationalize that insight. Maybe we prioritize these hearings first, or maybe it's better to divert them from the process altogether and uh, give them a, a letter or something like that. Um, so we're very much uh, exploring those options right now. We're also hiring. So if anyone is um, passionate about data-driven innovation and wants to come to the most fascinating city in America, and I think there's probably about five or 600 people in this room that fit that bill, um, please be in touch. Thank you.